If you would like to know how to make a game, you are in the right place. I'm going to cover the basics of Unity Engine. I'm going to be as concise as possible, so let's dig in. Steps to set up a Unity project. Click the first link in the description of this video, then download to get the Unity Hub. If you don't already have a Unity account, set one up on unity.com and then log into the Hub with that account. Install the downloaded file, open the Unity Hub, Go to Installs, then Install Editor, pick the latest LTS, which means long-term support, and then follow the steps to install that version of the editor. Once that's done installing, go to the Projects folder, click New Project, make sure 3D Built-in Render Pipeline is selected, then fill out the information on the right, and click on Create Project. Now you're looking at a brand new project that you can turn into a game. Let's talk about Unity's render pipelines. The different pipelines are basically just different ways of processing the graphics of a game. There are four different pipelines. First one is the universal pipeline or URP. That one is very performant. You can run it for mobile, for XR, and it can do, it's pretty good these days. It can do some pretty good graphics. If you want really high quality AAA graphics, you'd probably want to use HDRP or the high definition render pipeline. That is more challenging to work with because to get good performance, you have to do a lot of optimization. So that's a more of an advanced one. And then the third one would be the default pipeline. That was the original one. It's what a lot of tutorials are in. It's a good one. It's a good starting place, I'd say. And then the fourth one doesn't get talked about as much, but it's the custom one or the scriptable render pipeline, SRP. And um, we don't need to know about that one yet. I'll tell you about that one when you're older. Let's take a look at the editor. I know new software, especially a game engine, can be really intimidating with all the menus and tabs, but we'll cover the ones you'll need to want to get to... to, what, to what, We'll cover the ones you'll want to get familiar with to start. The rest you'll get more familiar with over time. So this here is your scene window. This is where you can position things and move around. You can hold alt and with your mouse button to change the viewing angle of it. The mouse wheel will scroll and there's more things you can do to move around in here. The gameplay is, takes place in the game tab which switches automatically when you start the game with the play button. The inspector is where you'll see properties of your game objects, which are the different objects here in your hierarchy. This is whatever is in the scene. These go together. This is what's in your project down here, your project folder. So like if you look at your file explorer, it'll be the same thing. And if you want to bring something into the game or the scene right now the easiest way to do that is to just drag it into the scene from here and then when you want to see the details of it you can look over in the inspector over here don't worry about the other parts of the engine for now those are the important things let's look at how unity does lighting there are three modes of lighting real time baked and mixed real time is the easiest to use it's dynamic so think day night cycle, light switches, flickering lights, changing lights. Then there's baked lighting, which looks amazing because you can have all the lighting and information bound. So shadows are not so dark and it's very performant, but you can't change it in the game and it's very complex to set up, or at least it, it is when you're starting off. And then the third one is mixed lighting, which is best because you take advantage of both of the visual quality and the performance of the two other of the two combined, basically. Um, but you're basically setting up lighting twice, so it's a lot of extra work. And you might not even need it depending on the type of game you're making. There's a lot to learn on the, on the topic of lighting, but try not to feel intimidated. My recommendation is to use real-time lighting until you feel comfortable in Unity. Then when you're ready to take on more learning for better looking scenes or more performance, you can start exploring baked or mixed lighting. To select your lighting, go to the lighting tab. If there's no lighting settings, just click new and it will set one up. Then make sure that real-time global illumination is checked and baked global illumination is unchecked. By the way, if you can't find any of the tabs I'm referencing, just go to window and look around. You should be able to find them in there. You can always move them around and set them up how you like, like any other typical software as well. A lot of people ask me if, if you can 3D model in Unity. Most, if not all, game engines are not 3D modeling software. You'll need a separate program to do this. 
Luckily, there are a few options like Maya, 3DS, Max, and Blender. If learning another software on top of a game engine feels like a lot, and it is, don't feel like you need to learn both right away. There's lots of assets available online, including directly in the Unity Asset Store. We are actually working with the Unity Asset Store today to share some of the great tools that are currently on sale. I picked out ones that I think are great for beginners to get started with and tools that will help you do things that you can do custom later, but it's great to have a helping hand when you're starting off. All the links to the assets are available in the description of this video. To import an asset, whether it's a 3D asset, a 2D sprite, audio, images of any kind, you can just drag them into your projects folder and it will automatically import. If you click on the imported asset and look at the inspector, there are import settings that you can change. The defaults are usually fine, but you can tweak them if you know what you're doing. One typical one, if you don't see your 3D model, just look at this scale option. Sometimes it will convert it. Sometimes you need to, depending what your 3D software does or what the model that you import does. If you want to bring in an asset from the asset store, simply get the asset in the store, go to my assets, click open in unity, this pop-up is called the Package Manager. Click the Download button, and then once it's done, click on Import. Another box will pop up. This just makes sure that you want to bring in all of the uh, elements of that asset, which you probably do. So just go ahead and click Import, and it will take, its, take the minute or few seconds, whatever, to import those items into your project. Voila! One of the first things I like to do in a scene is to bring in a custom sky. This always sets like a nice mood and I can get the idea of what I want the atmosphere to be like of this scene. I brought in this all sky asset. It has 220 skies, but we're just gonna be using one for this. There's lots to choose from. Go to your lighting tab, click on environment, and then under skybox material, click on the little circle on the right and you'll see a list of the different options that you can choose from. Choose the sky you want, and then you will have your cool mood of your scene. We're going to add some 3D objects into our scene to make an environment. I actually make assets for Unity. They're called goodies. This is the cozy room pack, which is part of the current sale. If your file is in the project folder, that means it's already been imported and you can simply drag the 3D asset into your hierarchy or the scene view. Now you can use W, E, and R on your keyboard to switch between moving, scaling, and positioning. Use control, like hold it down when you're moving things to snap it into place, and hold shift while clicking on objects to select multiple at once. And you can also edit the properties of these game objects from your hierarchy with precise values. Hopefully with those instructions, you can move things around and make a cool scene. If you want to walk around your level, you'll need to make a character controller. This requires a more intermediate understanding of coding to create a custom one, but there's lots available in the store. I really like this one that's on the sale that we're going to import. Then we can just find the prefab, drag it in, and we can set this up to use as our character controller. To set up this controller, let's first switch to Unity's new input system. Select Window. Package Manager, from the packages, select Unity Registry, search for Input System, and when you find it, select it and hit Install. This will require a restart, so just save and wait for your editor to restart. Once the asset's in Unity, if this doesn't come up automatically, you can go to Tools, Opsiv, Ultimate Character Controller, Installer to bring this up. Hit Install, and it should bring in all the important things that you need for the asset. Once that's installed, go to Tools, Opsiv, Ultimate Character Controller, Character Manager, and we want to turn off the animator. We also want to turn off items for now. And let's turn off health. And then we can click on Add Managers. We can go to the Project Update Buttons, Update Layers, then Set Up Camera, Add UI, Add Virtual Controls, then Build Character. If I'm just testing out a controller like this, I like to put in a cube add a width and depth to the cube and put it at the zero point. Put the first person character also the zero point just a bit above so it doesn't fall through the ground. And then we can test out by hitting the play button. And now we're able to walk around the scene. Most character controller assets will require a little bit of setup. The setup on this one is pretty straightforward and it has a lot of options for if you want to do more complex things. It does lots of different things like combat, you know, um, driving, falling, idle, 
this kind of thing is nice to have in a character controller because you can get familiar with one and then use it across many different projects. There are lots of really cool characters on the assets store. They can be difficult to make, so getting them from the asset store is a great place to start. And the one we're looking at, which is one that's on sale, you can also go in and customize the character, which is really fun. You can randomize it. This is showing up what we got on the scene here. But here we can randomize it. You can add or remove items from this list. You can select them. Really cute asset. And what we're going to do is we're going to connect it with the Unity, Unity's humanoid mechanism system. Unity's mechanism system does a number of things to bring characters to life. We're going to look at the humanoid avatar, which allows you to use animations across various characters, even if they have different setups and rigs. So what you want to do is click on a character that has a rig, and when you go into the import settings here in your inspector, you can select humanoid from the list here. And when we click apply, we can configure it and make sure everything is green. Here's where you link up the rig to the character. It's all done automatically. If all is good, it will all be green and good to go. And this means we can use our animations on this character, even if they have a different rig. To bring this character to life, we're going to add an animator. So we're going to select it in the hierarchy, add component in the inspector, and select animator. Here we're going to need a couple things. So if we go over to our project file, we'll find the spot in our hierarchy that we'd like here. We right click, create, and select animator controller. And you can name this whatever we like. I'm going to say blue guy. And if you double click on it, it takes us to this node-based editor. This is where we can add different animations to the animation controller. But before we do that, let's go over to the character and let's drag this into the controller here. Now this is what will control this guy. But we need to give him an animator. So what we can do is click on this here and search for the one that we just set up. Blue Body blue avatar is the one here. And so now we need to add an animation to this controller here. We're going to go over to our pack of animations. The one that we're using from the sale has a lot of really great stuff. Uh, we're going to go over to the idle movement one. And we're going to bring in this one here. So this little button here, this little icon here rather, is one that can be added to this. So if we drag it in, then we have this as our default animation. That's what this controller will play on entry. It'll go directly to this. And we're going to double click and make sure it loops. It does, so we're good to go test it out. And here is our guy moving in our scene now. Adding sounds to your game can really bring it to life. In this asset pack, which has a bunch of sound effects, you can really see what a satisfying button click can be like with a sound. To add audio to your game, right click on your hierarchy, create an empty game object, we'll say sound. Then over in your inspector, add component, audio source is what we're looking for. Here we can have a few options. We can play it right away on awake, so as soon as you start playing the game it will play. We can loop it. And one thing that's really cool to get used to is spatial blend here. If it's 2D it will play everywhere no matter where you are in the scene. But if it's 3D, it will only play if you're close to that object. So if we put it on the side of the room, you'll see what I mean. And then we want to make sure we add the audio clip here. So let's select one from that list of assets. And we can just drag it here in the audio clip. And let's try it. So you can see it's playing right away. It's also looping. And it's also fading out as we get further away from it. And louder as we get closer. If you're like me when it comes to game development, you'll probably want to add a dialogue system to your game. This can be very challenging to add if you're new to game development, but there are assets that can help you at the beginning. Or even if you know what you're doing, it can save you a lot of time instead of reinventing the wheel. This one here, Easy Talk, is one that has a lot of customization. I like it because you can have it so like it stops and holds the conversation as an overlay, or you can walk past two people talking, there can be speech bubbles, so you can really change how it works. And there's also visual customization and a node-based system. So this one's a really powerful but easy to use tool. Particle effects are a great way to add movement, show interactivity, or improve your game's visuals. 
You can add particle systems by right-clicking, selecting particle system, and adjusting the settings. These can be a little tricky to get right, but they're really fun to play around with. You can also buy pre-made assets to do some really cool stuff, like these cartoony particle effects, which are part of the sale. Shaders are a really cool part of Unity and game development in general. This is an example of using a shader to apply an effect to the whole game and give it a really cool stylized effect. You can get these assets from the Unity Asset Store or you can make them yourself in Unity. Making shaders yourself is more of an advanced topic, but it's made a lot easier with Unity's shader graph, which you can dig into sooner rather than later, as it's a lot easier than writing it out with code. And if you're looking to get one, I really like this tune shader, which is part of the sale. If you want to depict interactivity like selecting objects in your scene, it's nice to have some kind of change to the thing that you're looking at or selecting. So one great way to do that is an outline shader, which you can apply. And you probably want to use some code here, but I just want to give an example of this asset that you can get and use to do that. You can see from the store page that this easy perform and outline shader is really great in a lot of different scenarios. If you've learned something in this video, please pay it forward by sharing this with somebody who'd like to learn to make games. Unity Learn and Unity Documentation are both great resources for continuing your learning on these topics. There's also a lot of really great YouTubers who cover Unity content. If you'd like me to cover a specific topic in particular, let me know in the comments and maybe I'll make a video on it. You're also welcome to come by my stream. I'm on almost every day and I'm happy to answer questions or help give direction if you're stuck on something. Also, don't forget all of the assets I showed in this video are on sale right now for a really great price. So you can find them in the description if you want to take a look. And uh, good luck with your learning. We'll see you in the next video. We'll see you in the next video. Like and subscribe for good luck in game dev.